So I recently got an Aurora 100 and I made quite a few changes. So I wanted to show you guys how I went from the stock configuration to this. So I'll discuss five different topics. I want to discuss the frame, the receiving antenna, cloverleaf protection, wire pathways, and then finally the parts. So let's get into it. So the first thing I did was to upgrade the frame. So this is the original frame. And unfortunately, second flight flew, crashed directly onto concrete, and this guy got nice and bent and broken. So I ordered a new frame and I made some updates. So I basically got the new frame and I got some um, art supplies from AC Moore, which are basically little popsicle sticks. Uh, any link that I can put, I will put in the description for all these parts. Um, but I cut down these popsicle sticks to size. I sanded them and then painted them with some red spray paint. And then I put them on the top and the bottom with hot glue, slid a piece of heat shrink over it and shrunk it down. And that basically added some rigidity into the frame and hopefully it'll give me a little bit more crash protection. I haven't crashed this directly onto concrete again. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure how durable it is directly in comparison, but I've crashed it plenty of times, tumbled, uh, and haven't broken uh, an arm since. So the other thing I did to the frame is I colored it. So along the edges there, uh, I basically got the Sharpie markers that are basically like a red Sharpie paint and silver. And they come in all sorts of colors. And I basically just went around the entire edge before I assembled it and gave it this little kind of pinstripe accent on it um, to give it a nice little color. So I basically increased the rigidity of the frame and gave it a little bit more crash protection. Next thing I want to talk about is the antenna. So if you look on the original packaging, you can see the antenna is just sticking up and magically floating there which doesn't actually work in real life. So for that, I put my receiving antenna in this zip tie and heat shrink casing. Um, so basically all I did to do that was I took a credit card and doubled it up and matched these two penetrations in the aft section here. Ran the zip tie through put the antenna on the bottom of it and put the heat shrink on. And then I basically just shrunk this down and to get this bend in it, if you heat up this and hold it while it cools, it will give you this bend um, or whatever bend direction you want, uh, just hold it as it cools. The other thing I wanna discuss is separation on some of these components. It's a little bit hard to tell, but right in there, that little silver guy is where the antenna is. And you can see how close it is to the frame. So when I was flying, originally I was getting all sorts of static and a couple dropouts. So what I did is basically add a tiny piece of electrical tape onto the frame because carbon fiber is conductive. So I added it to the frame so that the antenna would not ground out on the frame and would actually use the antenna pathway. Um, for that. Next thing I want to discuss is the cloverleaf protection. So when I originally got this guy, the cloverleaf is just kind of exposed right in the front. As soon as you get a couple crashes into it, it really gets mangled and looks something like this, where you can see all the lobes are bent, destroyed, and as you can imagine, it gave me really bad signal. So, in order to resolve that, I purchased these antenna covers uh, on Amazon um, and I got a fresh cloverleaf. So, I took off the old one and then I drilled a hole into this guy and sandwiched two of these together. I fit the antenna through there and then soldered it onto the camera. So then you kind of got a stack up with, with the camera on the bottom and then this feeding through. 
And then I basically just positioned that onto the frame um, and hot glued them together and hot glued it to the frame. The last thing I did is, since I didn't want to rely just on hot glue, I cut a notch in the side of each one of these. So I gave a, a little notch right here and a notch right here, um, which allowed me to pass a zip tie through the bottom of the frame. So it goes underneath the frame and around this. And I used a couple dabs of hot glue just so it wouldn't slide off forward or aft. And I have not had an issue with that since. I've taken plenty of crashes. My receiver, or um, sorry, my transmitter signal has been great uh, ever since that. And this also um, provides protection against your antenna grounding out as well. You know, like I said for the, the receiving antenna here, carbon fiber is conductive. So if, if you don't have something in between your antenna and it gets bent down and touches the carbon fiber, well, that's going to impact your transmission of your video link and that can definitely cause you to crash. The last thing I want to talk about before getting into the parts is separation on these boards. So you can see just how small this guy is uh, when I put it in the palm of my hand. It is really small. So for that, you got a lot of current that is going through all of these wires here to supply your motors here. One of the things that I noticed um, was that this wire, which is for my video, um, basically my video link uh, and transmitter, that it was routed directly down here and kind of floating around and could get really close to this board, which carries plenty of current for your motors and anything else in there. So just be cognizant, if you're having video issues, to check the pathways of your wires. There's no shielding on any of these wires. So they're definitely susceptible to electromagnetic interference. Um, so I'd recommend just separating them out and I just put a little dab of hot glue just to keep them up a little bit higher. I think that also helped with my video transmission issues. So that kind of wraps it up with the frame updates and what I did to protect my clover leaf and how I added in this extra receiver kind of whip antenna support. Um, so now I want to get into some of the parts of um, that I upgraded or changed out um, throughout the last couple months of having this. So first thing I want to discuss is batteries. So this guy comes with this Esheen 450 uh, 80C uh, rating battery, which I truly do believe I was really uh, skeptical, skeptical at the beginning that this ADC was not really truthful. But I can tell you, these are the best batteries that I have gotten my hands on since. I've tried these three others here. Um, some of these were kind of just, hey, I need some batteries. I can't find any. I'm going to give it a shot. Uh, this is a Venom 300 milliamp hour 30C. It gets you in the air, but your voltage alarm uh, starts screaming at you if you do any kind of um, punch outs or really crazy maneuvers. I also tried the E-Flight 400 milliamp 30C, didn't quite cut it either. And then more recently, I got these Dual Sky 400s 30C, and these didn't cut it either. And basically, this was just because right now, batteries are really hard to find for these things. So I got something to get me in the air. Um, I haven't tried any tattoo batteries or any, any of those guys, but... If you order this quad and these are in stock, get a couple of them. They're actually really solid batteries. Next thing I want to discuss is the props. So when I ordered it, I grabbed a bunch of these um, four bladed props. They're pretty flimsy and you know, I figured, hey, I'll give them a shot. I'll just get some extras. I know they work because that's what comes with it. Well. A couple crashes and nothing really severe, just a couple tumbles in the grass and your props end up like this. The, the blades aren't beat up. You can see that these didn't hit any tree branches. Basically just tumble along in the grass, nothing major, and they are destroyed, out of balance, kind of worthless. Um, so what, 
what I'd recommend are these tri-blade props. Um, and on this, you can see they have taken a beating. You can see there's a nice chunk out of this one. They're all discolored, um, little chips and nicks. And I have yet to replace these. They definitely have some vibration issues because I've bent them back after they've bent um, from crashes. But if you want to stay in the air, these props are very solid choice. Um, I got decent performance out of them. And may, the most important thing to me is that I'm not spending time swapping out props every time I take a tumble in the grass. Um, so I'd recommend these. <clears throat> um, they're, they're really solid um, props. The other thing I wanted to show you is when I ordered this, it didn't come with a case. So I actually went out and found this uh, Zeiss, uh, this Zeiss case, which I will link in the description below. But it works out great. You can throw your quad in here, throw your props, your uh, Allen wrench, any extra battery testers in there. Uh, throw some batteries in here, snap it up, and throw it in your book bag, whatever, um, with your, your uh, video goggles and your transmitter, and you're good to go. You don't have to worry about this. Um, it gives it some durability to throw it wherever you need to. So I, I definitely recommend getting something. And for, I think I got this at, for five bucks at Home Goods. Uh, I'd highly recommend it. The one last thing I want to talk about, I did have an issue with my the bell housing on one of my motors. I believe it was, was this front left one, um, where it was actually pulling up and the press fit to hold your bell crank or your bell housing and your shaft together was coming apart. Um, so what I did for that was I pulled it apart and put some JB Weld in there and just press fit it back together um, and I haven't had any issues since. I think I do have, yeah, this guy has some slop in it and that'll probably be the next uh, candidate for, for that repair. But um, overall, I'd say it's a pretty solid quad. Um, once you get some of these issues resolved um, to get really reliable flights where you're relying on your skill and not components on the quad, but this is a blast to fly and I would definitely recommend it um, for getting you into it. And uh, it's, it's a great quad. It's got the, the battery uh, voltage alarm there, which I rely on heavily um, just to let me know how much battery's left. And this thing is great. So I'll wrap it up there. Uh, all the links will be in the video description down below. Uh, let me know if you guys have any questions.